Nine on the Denver Nuggets. Looking for three in a row. 13 out of 14. Red Hot Knicks going into mile high. But the usual adage is, you know, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Definitely didn't go in this game. Knicks started the game off terribly. And it all came crashing down immediately. The MVP, Nikola Jokic and company, took care of the Knicks in quick fashion. Up by as much as 28 points. Jokic with 24 points in the first quarter. Lousy start by Julius. RJ. It just couldn't get any worse, man. Knicks would try to get back into this in the second half, but it was just too much Jokic, too much Campazzo. Austin Rivers gets his revenge. And this is just one that you wish you would forget, man. Knicks go down 113 to 97 in Denver. Just get absolutely smoked for the second time against this Denver Nuggets team. And that's all she wrote, man. Knicks Post Game Live presented by Manscaped. CP Ashley Mall, CK2K in the building. Tough night. A lot of L's. A lot of L's for the Knicks tonight. Not just in this game, but around the league. And we'll get to that later, but... CK, as I said in the opening, man, you know, the, the old adage is not how you started, how you finish. You got to throw that out the window, man, because you couldn't have asked for a more nightmarish start by the Knicks today. R.J. Barrett picks up two quick fouls in two seconds. Give credit to the Nuggets and Malone. They, they try to exploit him on the mismatch with Aaron Gordon, and it worked. New Orleans Noel picks up a foul right after that. Thibodeau picks up a technical foul. And there you go. <laughs> against a team like this it's just not gonna cut it bro and it was a long night from there on out man what would you think about this game bro yeah our team ended that first quarter how a lot of teams and their whole games because i think yeah rj ended up with three in that first quarter yeah. to, uh same with nerlands we had two technicals total with uh um uh, coming from tibbs and then coming from uh who, who was it that got it was a taj 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 got, got one later on yeah yeah it, that first quarter was just a complete and utter nightmare. We just were not able to to catch up. We could talk about the referees, but uh, the Knicks did yeah. not make it easy on ourselves either. We were everything was short. Yeah. Nothing was going in. We were we just it, we just looked uninspired tonight. We had some moments where we sparked up a little bit, but defensively we just were not there. Offensively we were not there. It was just an all around tough tough game. And like yeah. you mentioned, it, normally I'd be like, you know what, shake it off, go on to the next one, but. Seeing how everything's going on around the league tonight, a you know, L's, so it's a man. rough, rough one to take. It's a big, rough one to take. Big, big L for us. We got to big move. L's, big L's, and we got to move forward. Ash, what you think about this game tonight? Well, first of all, I'm just saying we're two and zero when it's just you and I on the show. So I don't want to say CK Jinx. But I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. No, look, it's it's a bad <laughs> matchup. You know, Denver, first of all, notoriously is a very hard place to play. The altitude yeah. is just out there it's very very hard you guys will tell you that throughout the course of nba history it's one of the hardest cities to play i'm not excusing it um you get paid millions of dollars in this league to be able to play anywhere but it is just what it yeah, is we haven't won there in 15 years so something got to give yeah. you know something's got to give eventually but look this is one of the reasons why we said that you have to take the games that you're supposed to win. And that was Memphis. Yeah. That was Houston. Because yeah. as you start getting Big deeper facts. into this road trip, the opponents start getting harder. And the Denver Nuggets are one of those opponents. You have the MVP of the league on this team. You have a solid team. Um, you know, they were just killing us from all aspects of the game, which, again, which is why it was so important to, to lock in those first two wins. Yeah. It could have been a lot worse. You could have been deeper in the hole. Um, you're not so bad. I mean, it does suck a little bit that the Hawks went ahead and won their game tonight. Blew out the sunset. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it does suck because like, like we've always talked about, you know, especially in this portion of the season, every win counts and every loss counts. Um, especially when you're trying to get a good spot in the playoff seating, but it could be a lot worse. Yeah. To have lost, um, you know, the other two games. So it, it's bad, but listen, you lost to a really good basketball team. Yeah. It's just a bad matchup. Yeah. You didn't lose. It's not you know, a good matchup for us. It's not a good yeah, matchup. It's a bad for us. matchup. Yeah. I mean, but they look lethargic from the jump. Yeah. Things weren't clicking. And when Julius Randle's not clicking, it really takes everybody else to get involved. And it just didn't happen the way it was supposed didn't, to happen. It did, didn't happen. You know, the energy collectively was just down. And I thought the two quick fouls had eliminated RJ from the game. It, it cuts down on how aggressive yeah. you can be, takes you out of the game mentally, physically. And that, that hurt us. But give credit, again, Mike Malone was playing chess out there. The Gordon thing is interesting, man, because he, he, he could play the four. 
But when I looked at the lineup, I said, oh, shoot. I said, I got, okay, I got Bullock on, on, on Michael Porter Jr., but Aaron Gordon, RJ on Gordon, that's going to be a tough battle, man. Went right to him, two quick fouls, and, and that was tough. Julius, tough night for him as well. I thought later on in the game, he got taken out mentally. You know, you knew the, you knew the Joker was going to dominate no matter who it was. Obviously, we missed Mitch out there. Nerlens isn't isn't the physical center. Taz did, tried to do his best, but he got worked. I mean, Jokic, Jokic was just destroying him. 32 points, 12 rebounds, 6 to 6, 24 points in the first quarter. 10 to 16 from the field. Jokic absolutely dominated him. When I did my pregame show earlier today and I talked about the, the Luca Vildoza signing, I talked about the fact that, you know, these Argentinian uh, players are real scrappy. Yeah, and, and they come in and they fill in solid roles. And I said we were going to take a look at Facundo Campazzo CK tonight. And tonight he killed us, man. Love 16 him, man. points, 9 boards, 4 assists, 5 steals, 2 blocks for, for Campazzo. He was all over the stat sheet tonight and just ran roughshod all over us, bro. 5 steals. Five I'm steals. sorry. I, I love that, dude. That guy is just yeah. all over the place. This gives me Pablo Prigioni vibes. Like how he does everything. Like he's always on a swivel. Like it feels like... You could push him over, and he's still going to find a way to yeah. keep the ball and dribble and play. Like, the dude, he was very impactful for them in so many ways, and we just had no answers for no a answer. yeah. Forget Michael Porter Jr. Forget, you know yeah. what I mean? And I feel like Nikola uh, Jokic, like, I think he went easy on us because he yeah. had a cool 24. Thanks. He had a, a full night's nice game in that first quarter, and he only ended with 32. So he played. He, he was easy. He went easy on us because he could have easily had a 60-point game tonight and had Goodness, all of the mainstream media going crazy about him tomorrow. Uh, so – Thanks, Jokic. But, not, uh, they, not only but, that, but they missed. They didn't even have Jamal Murray on the court. Yeah, well, like, I mean, they they I haven't missed Murray that, yeah. since he went down. You know, they're yeah. now ten and two out, without him. The, imagine this team. Imagine playing this team with yeah. Jamal Murray also yeah, on the everything court. happened. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It, it's. I mean, this just goes to show you why Jokic is the clear front runner for MVP. I know people want to say CP3 is in the conversation and a bunch yeah. of other guys. Yeah, no, it's Jokic. It's it's you definitely know, Jokic. The Joker sorry, is joke, and this is his award mm -hmm. to take and it's his award to lose. I mean, yeah. you just saw the MVP performance in the flesh and this is not playing a, a, a rinky-dink New York Knicks team. Yeah. This is playing Facts. a New York Knicks team who's in the top four in the East. So it says a lot to be able to play against one of the top five. Top defense. 10 in the league. Yeah, hundred percent. We, we just not a rollover team. Yeah, he and you could see from the from the jump he had that extra. He was playing, playing like he he because he he said it last night after that game against the Lakers. You know, he it was on him. You know, it ain't gonna happen again. It ain't gonna happen two nights in a row. Yeah, and he showed that the, the quick twenty two in that first quarter. He was just they taking back. us to where we had no answers for him. And yeah, like you guys said, yeah. he showed tonight why he is the the no, the number one choice for MVP this season. Big bar facts. none. Like he was he was hoping big tonight. facts. And, and and then Ash, we, we talked about Jokic, we talked about Campazzo. You knew the Austin Rivers game yeah, was man. coming. You knew the Austin Rivers game was coming. You knew he was circling this game on his calendar. Oh, the elbow threes was splashy. Mans went six and nine from downtown. Obviously killed us. Was looking at the bench the whole time. Him and Julius got into it. He was cooking quickly. Austin Rivers, 25 points, seven to thirteen from the field. Uh, that was tough to see, man. I, I had to turn it off after that, man. I, once Austin after Rivers that, got cooking, I was I was done. So one or two things you're gonna get from Austin Rivers, right? So Denver, be prepared. This may be his last good game with you. Because, <laughs> right. you know, if it's anything like Utah, you won't see this again. Yeah. Um, or it's just that this you know situation happens to work better for him, especially with Jamal Murray kind of out of the situation, and maybe it allows him to kind of flourish a little bit more. I don't know, but if it if Rivers um, you know, if it, anything, Austin Rivers has showed us on the New York Knicks is he's he's probably good for one yeah. of these every couple of months. Erratic, so erratic as they come. Not something I'm going to, you know, fear in the long run. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Right. But, I mean, right. it does suck to be able, you know, to say that you, you know, got one up on your former team. Yeah, he um, got his revenge. That's more of an ego thing than anything else. So. That definitely got his revenge, man. So that was tough to see, but certainly expected it to come and you know on, on my pregame show another thing i said we got to take care of the ball man this team is number eight in steals a solid defense a good obviously we know their offense is dominant but they're a good defense as well protect the paint um jokic and and, and javel mcgee killed us in the paint we absolutely feared them and again steals they're eighth in the league in steals the knicks said they, the knicks gave up 11 steals tonight 13 sorry 13 steals 
to this team. You just can't, you know, against a team like this, you got to play damn near perfect of a game. And the, the Knicks did everything they could to lose this game. And you, you just, <laughs> you, there's not too many teams where you could afford this many mistakes and no energy and just lackluster play and expect to win. Not, especially not against this team in their building where you haven't won in 15 years. You just, there's no chance. No chance. Yeah, not at all. So, 113.97. I mean, positives, uh, <laughs> it's hard to find, you know. <laughs> our, our bigs had, had, their, had their times. You know, Noel had certainly had some, some highlights, some highlight blocks. I thought Taj hustled out there at times as well. RJ came alive. He, he sort of, you know, found his, his jumper late in the, uh, in the third quarter. But, you know, every time the Knicks would try to get a run, maybe they knocked down five or six points and Nuggets would come right back with a couple threes themselves. So they, they, we could just never get fully back into the game. And, and uh, I think the most we cut it down to was maybe about 16 and then they were able to push it back out. So it is what it is. We'll, we'll chalk this one up and uh, head to Phoenix on Friday, man, hoping for revenge. But, you know, that Phoenix team is going to have something to play for after getting washed by the Atlanta Hawks yep. who put up 132 on them. So... You know, it's a tough one, tough one all the way around for the Knicks. But let's hear from the people tonight. Let's go Uptown Harlem World. Hector, what's going on? Yo, what's going on, CK? What's going on, CP? What's up, bro? Um, and what's going on, Ashley? I just wanted to say, regarding tonight's game, I thought that, for, for the most part, um, Denver just showed us that they were a way better um, team than us on the sure. floor. I mean, from the beginning tip off, they just, um, not just out-hustled us, but they kind of just game planned and they showed why really the Western Conference is a more dominant conference than the East. But I was also going to tell you that um, I wanted to get your guys' opinion on um, the way Randall played tonight because, um, yeah, he was off early, but there's there's this thing about Randall that I'm a little con- yeah. concerned about. His play alone, it kind of concerns me only when, like, he's, it, it's no, like, there's no difference. There's no lie that his transcendence on offense has been, like, unbelievable this year. Nobody saw this coming. But when we get to the playoffs, the um the refs aren't going to swallow the whistle. Right. So when he does that thing where he, he gets into tight defenses and he starts to swing his elbows, yeah. I mean, he catches somebody on the, on the face, they're not going to be calling a normal common foul. They're going to be giving him flagrant. So I want to know how he handles double teams, and I just wanted to hear your guys' opinion on that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, we've seen it time and time again with Julius is that when he's not getting the benefit of the whistle, it kind of takes him out of his game. And so, as you said, he's, he's going to find those double teams more often as we get into the closeout six games left. And as we head into the playoffs, you can expect more of that. He may not get the benefit of the doubt, especially on the road. So he's got to play through it. He's got to play through it, continue to play smart, make quick decisions. Find his teammates. Nick's got to do a good job of moving off ball and getting into, you know, his vision so that he can find them. But overall, Julius just has to lock in. Tonight wasn't his night. Yeah. Closing the show tonight. Papa left. The Knicks set. King, what's going on, bro? What's going on, man? Oh feeling? man, shout out to uh shout out to CK. Welcome back. Shout out to Ashley. That's good, man. Shout out to CP. And shout out to everybody in the chat on Discord, um, you know, on a personal tip for supporting. Yep. That's crazy, crazy support. Like, Reggie Bullock was definitely smoking the loud pack yesterday and just like, crazy. yo, D-Rose, he come over here real quick. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope so. Um, but, um, yo, so tonight. I got called. I got called by the front desk because I was making too much noise. The point of the game, if anybody wants to guess, you got a second. The point of the game was when Alfred Payton Oof. gave up two straight threes. Okay, two Oof. straight threes to Rivers and then Harrison off of just like losing sight of his man for absolutely yeah. no reason. No reason. And then did the most unexplicable. I don't know what it was. It's for a half court steal. Yeah. And I was just like, what are you doing? What yeah. are you doing? Like, I just let that one out. My sent, sent, to the, sent him to the bench um, quick fast. And that was, was all you terrible. heard from him. Uh, <laughs> Nerlens Noel gets the ball of the game for me. Like, the dude is guarding Facts. the MVP of the NBA. He's on a he's on a sprained ankle. Yeah. And, uh, and it looked like he you got know, hurt some whatever, more tonight, man. You know, Nerlens is whatever a Jermichael, Whatever Jermichael Green was, was smoking, <laughs> the Knicks need to take that. <laughs> Combine that with the game he film, tried him. roll it he up. Tried. He tried. He really tried him. 
Yeah, you should just really just roll that up in one and just, you know, when, on my football team when we had a bad game, we used to take the tape and physically bury it. Yeah. And I feel like tonight is one of those nights. But um, like, like, like you guys said, with it's like you either win or you learn. Um, I wanted to point out just a couple points of the season that had nothing to do with basketball but had to do with the winning culture. Um, starting, ironically, with Austin Rivers saying that this team is not a losing team or a winning team. And when we were 5-8, and eight, mm-hmm. um, yeah, then Derek that. Rose, when he responded to Mitchell Robinson's injury live on TV, um, another Derek Rose uh, instance where he's getting, uh, you know, mad love from uh, World Wide West, and World Wide West is all over the place, hugging up on Tibbs. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also the big three moment, where Bullock is confident enough to stand next to to Randall, and Randall's like, we got a big uh, Bullock, we got a big five, and Randall's like, no, we got a big fifteen. So it's like in the past, a twenty point loss on the road versus a twenty point loss on the road this year, they're two different games. In the mm-hmm. past, it's like, well, we just have to get competitive. You know, we we have to find a way to to be competitive. And, and make it a game. But tonight it had a different uh, learning curve because tonight it was, all right, you got the slam cover, you got you got everybody on you now, and you got steamrolled in the first quarter and, and could never fight your way back. Yeah. So now you need to know that you're a marked team and people yeah. are coming out from the jump matching yeah. your intensity. How are yeah. you going to react to that? Sure. And if you remember the movie by Adam Sandler with Click, He would just, like, autopilot through all, like, the frustrating parts, like, of his life. And, like, (laughs) he missed all of it. And he missed, like, all the, like, the things that he thought was miserable. Like, as a Knicks fan, trust me, you're not going to miss that. Like, we actually (laughs) got through a rebuild with a fast-forward button. Like, a three-, four-year rebuild with a fast-forward button. So, we're actually way ahead of schedule. I really want to take one of these games out of the west coast trip this versus suns lakers and clippers um one more. tonight you, you one can't more. you can't just get out of you, you can't just get out of this game and not be afraid of how we look tonight so i'm really looking forward to coming out strong in, in the next game uh shout out to everybody and uh great job as always all 72 we in here yes sir we in here man so pop a left 